son. Where'd you find this? You are now listening to Podcast 42, the world's most popular, inaccurate, and sometimes squirreled retelling of pop culture history. Longitude, latitude on there. Oh, Iceland, yeah. Do you think it's a brewery? I have no idea. I just hear I it. feel like we're pre-podcast jizzing again. No, I feel like he already started it. Like we're not. Because <laughs> <laughs> on that note, it's time for Podcast 42. I'm Christopher DeVos. I'm Nicole Fasson. I'm Jail Charles. I'm Fraz. Hey! While we all open our beers, <laughs> guess that means we should jump right into Jail's beer cooler. JL Beer Cooler, it's cooler than you think. JL Beer Cooler, it's cooler than you drink. It's cooler than you drink, yeah. I usually have always in it. What would you bring this week? Oh, I had Faraz in mind with this one, especially after his great review of the Einstock Pale Ale. <laughs> I went, you know, look at this. This is another Einstock beer we've never had. So I want Einstock Icelandic Arctic Berry Ale. A nice white ale brewed with bilberries. With what berries? Bilberries. I feel like I should be going to the Shire with this. Bil- <laughs> no, I was thinking it too. Like, you <laughs> sound like a hobbit. Bilberries sound like something that, um, you know, you would have trouble with in the bathroom. <laughs> well, I didn't have any issues with that before this, but you know, I might ask. Because you guys aren't using Charmin with a hard C8. <laughs> I am using the Charmin. And I thought Einstock had the I same uh, can, but this is different. No, it's the same. It's got the Viking on there. The only difference is he's ready for summer. <laughs> and he's wearing his sunglasses. So here we are recording at night. So we got the Corey Hart of Vikings who wear his sunglasses at night. I wear my sunglasses at. I never know what he says after that part. No, me either. He goes, and I'm too lazy to look up the lyrics. Yeah, so me I just too. Like to make up my own words to it every time. I never want to know. I just it goes so I can, so I can. <laughs> Oh, what a time to be alive. <laughs> you don't you don't know who Corey I, Hart is. No. Do How do you not know who Corey Hart is? I don't know a lot of things. How much you learn that? He's married to Pink. Okay, yeah. I do. No. Isn't he? Casey Hart is married to Pink. No. There is a Hart married to Pink, Harry but it's Hart. not the same Harry guy. Harry <laughs> <laughs> Hart is married to Pink. Terrible. I didn't know if you were serious or not. Half serious. <laughs> The description on this label is very... Uh, it sounded really good when I said it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Description on the this label. Label's yes. thought, uh, this label's description is very thought-provoking. Okay, tell it us says, about it. It says, in Iceland... JL, I can't read that word. Sumar Dargarin. Firsty. <laughs> Sumar Dargarin. <laughs> Firsty. <laughs> the first day of summer. Designates the arrival of warmer temperatures and abundant sunshine. At Einstock, we're celebrating summer with this limited edition Arctic Berry Ale. Why is the A in lowercase after? Th- is that a period or a comma? It's a period. No, it should be a comma. It's okay. comma. Go okay. back. Go right. back. Like... Over the falls. Yeah. Back. Back. <laughs> <laughs> it's a refreshing wheat beer. Flavored with tasty bilberries, hand-picked near the Arctic Circle. In the perfect ale for your summer adventures. But enjoy it while you can. It will disappear with the midnight sun. I give the label a two. Why? But I give my description of the Maelstrom A5. <laughs> <laughs> Long live the Maelstrom. That's right. It's dead. It is. But, so, well, go ahead. You know what? You know what else goes great with this? For us, how did you describe this? Oh, I didn't describe it yet. I was admiring the can. Yes, but I feel like you described the can and the beer a little bit. Oh, thought-provoking. You know what else is thought-provoking? What's that? Our topic of the night. The Muppets? <laughs> the Muppets. Very controversial topic. Why is it controversial? 
Because some people hate it, some people love it, some people just don't understand what it should be. The Muppets? Be. Yeah. I guess we'll learn when Is we it for read kids? the script. Is it for adults? No one seems to be able to make up their minds, except for Jim Henson, who created it. He's been gone a little He's while. been gone. Did you change the script drastically from the last time I read it? To make Welcome it more controversial? The... Original <laughs> you did to that? address the controversies surrounding the topic? Yes, and how it canceled one of my favorite shows? Yeah. Oh boy, this is going to be brand new for me too, I guess. <laughs> but let's get out our pens and papers. Wait, one of your favorite shows? Yeah, the reboot was one of my favorite shows of 2015. There's a show called The Reboot? There is a show called Reboot, actually. It's a Canadian show. It was made by Mainframe Entertainment, the same company that made Beast Wars Transformers. Is it really called Reboot, and you're just saying it in Canadian? No, (laughs) It's based on the word, like... That would be the funniest thing she's ever said. All right, hold on one second. Three, two, one, what? Contact! (laughs) What do you want us to do? Nothing, we're back Are we on. starting over again? No, we're not starting over again. And He's... this is another new episode of Podcast 42. <laughs> Let's crack right and open into my beer cooler, which we already have. Wait, we should introduce mm. ourselves, JL. No, okay. we're not starting over. We're getting out our pens and paper. We're doing the pop, pop quiz. quiz. Pop quiz. This pop quiz is called, when you get to question number five, don't Kermit suicide. <laughs> Or uh, that was a fuzzy joke right there. It was. I think it was fuzzy joke. <laughs> or do you think the count ever worries that his days are numbered? <laughs> Read it. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. <laughs> One pop quiz. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. That's, that's really sad though. What? Because the count can't be there anymore for us. Why? Because his days were numbered. <laughs> Is he still? He's. Isn't he on Sesame Street still? Wasn't yes, the count? He is. Okay, he's still going, I believe. Well, this pop not, quiz is it's not all the same. part of your imagination. Why Just is it like not the same? Why is he so bitter? This was supposed to be a fun topic. No, it's a controversial topic. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> when <laughs> it wasn't when I wrote it originally. It was fun. It, it went through multiple then, rewrites, oh, sir. Multiple rewrites. And that's why and when as, it comes time for the rest of our topics, we're all just going to submit a script for day of. <laughs> <laughs> this is five general knowledge facts on the Muppets in order of the easiest to the hardest to test your knowledge score. One point for each correct answer. Yeah. Question number one. What instrument does animal play? Super easy. Everyone should be able to get that one. The instrument that animals play. That animals animal. Play. animal. <laughs> yeah, there's more than one. There's the Muppet baby yes. animal also. Hint, it's not the triangle. Question number two. Did you put the triangle down for us? Because now you look disappointed. Isn't Ralph Wiggum play the Count triangle? Calm down, Mr. Tambourine That's man. the wrong show. Question number two. What kind of car does Fozzie drive in the Muppet movie? What type of car? Oh, I don't I don't know how to spell all. it, but I know how to say it. That's okay. Spelling does not count. I don't know. You got to write down I something. I also know whose it was. I don't remember whose it was. It wasn't Fozzie's? No. Whose was it? His uncle's. Oh, okay. Now I do remember that. Who, no, question number three. Who is the captain of the USS Swine Track in Pigs in Space? <laughs> Going back. The original Muppet uh, Show, Pigs in Space. Who is the captain? Uh, Hint, it's not Miss Piggy. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> All right, get a little harder. Question number four. What are the color of the polka dots on Fozzie's tie? You have a one in two million chance of getting this right. There are two million different colors? I don't know. I have less because I can't tell colors. No? No. Canadians can't tell colors? I can't. Every Canadian is colorblind is statistically proven. They did an actual like scientific study on this. Must be why they don't mind the snow so much. It all looks like gold to us. <laughs> but and... do you eat that gold snow? <laughs> <laughs> no. Question number five. What Muppet has appeared in every single Muppet movie? There's only one. He, he's been in them all. Hint, it's not the count. Damn it. All right, pencils down. Easy one. What instrument does animal play for us? Drums. JL. Drums. Nicole. Drums. Animal drum. (laughs) Very good. Question number two. What kind of car does Fozzie drive in the Muppet movie jail? Studebaker. Nicole? I said a convertible. For us? I said a Jeep. 
Studebaker. Is that a convertible? Is no. it a Jeep? No. Okay. I don't know what it is. It could have been a convertible. I could have gotten half a point. You could have, you could have but you got a zero point. That's fine. <laughs> Who is the captain of the USS Swine Trek and Pigs in Space? Nicole. I said Gonzo. Pigs in Space? You said it wasn't Miss Piggy, so it could have been any other Muppet. The name of this... Pigs <laughs> in Space! Gonzo is not a pig. He's a whatever. He's an... <laughs> He's not a pig. He's definitely not a pig. Jail. James Tiberius Pork. That was really close for us. Captain Oinka card. <laughs> <laughs> I like yours too. It's pigs in space. The next generation. <laughs> Link hog throb. Oh, Link hog throb. Yeah. Hog throb. <laughs> <laughs> like a heart throb. Yeah. Like hog throb. Although I like your name better. Uh, what are the color of the polka dots on Fozzie's tie for us? I have purple. Purple. Jail. Red and yellow. Red and yellow. Nicole. I said yellow. Pink. Uh, Pink is oh. the answer. Hmm. Okay. And hmm. what Muppet has appeared hmm. in every single Muppet? What has are it... you um- ooming? Nothing. I was... You know you're ooming for a reason. I know. No, go on with the question. You please. want to dispute that, don't I you? I don't want to dispute that at all. No. <laughs> he totally wants to dispute that. I will that. raise my fight, 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 disputes fight. later on. When I when I went and combed questions from the internet, I I looked this one up. His tie is white with pink polka dots. Yes. yes. I see pink sometimes as purple. Okay, so you want uh, you you get a fourth of a point. <laughs> <laughs> I want a handicap point. You get you get five points for your captain of the U.S. Swine Trek, though. That was good. What Muppet has appeared in every single Muppet movie for us? Ralph. Jail. Kermit. Nicole. Kermit? Zoot. I don't know who, who the is. hell is Zoot? Zoot is the saxophone player. That's correct. Oh. Who's part of the Electric Mayhem. Oh. They were so funny on the Muppet oh. show. That was one of the best parts. Did he? He is the one when you go on Muppet Vision 4D, who yeah. like when the uh, ironing board because he's like, "Hey, watch yeah. out, man!" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't you do something with the saxophone though in the show? Wasn't there a running gag? Uh, Bubbles, I think, came out of it or something like that. I think different things came out of it. Yeah, diff- it was probably different things. So but... maybe that's why he's in every movie. Maybe that they See, ran I that gag Kermit in the movie because of how he was the newscaster on Sesame Street. So. Yeah. Well, you would think Kermit or Miss Piggy definitely because they've been around so long. I would think Kermit before Zoot. Miss Piggy. Yeah. I just would. I well, feel maybe like he's more The Electric Mayhem is without a doubt the greatest name for a band ever that could mm-hmm. never be used. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's get into this controversial script that wasn't controversial when it was originally written. Faraz decided it was before we started. Nicole, lead us off. The Muppets are an ensemble cast of charming puppet characters known mostly for movies and sketch comedy. They were lovingly conceived by Jim Henson and his wife, Jane Henson, in the tender year of 1955. In the tender year of 1955? Lovingly conceived that year, sir. Why is 1955 tender? And why is it lovingly conceived? I can already tell what part Faraz has <laughs> rewritten. Yes. What made 1955 tender? Explain. That's when the Muppets came about. Okay, so then the years it, it got gentle. gentler. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so maybe the Muppets were like born in July. J- January through June was traumatic, and then it, we we And then it kind eased. of mellowed out the year. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Continue. God. <laughs> Kermit the Frog, possibly everyone's favorite amphibian, was the couple's first Muppet and quickly became the signature character of the franchise. The Muppets were originally intended as characters for an adult audience akin to the 2015 ABC reboot. (laughs) Oh my god. And the term Muppet was a mashup of the words marionette and puppet. Henson is credited as coining the word. I think someone really skewed this script. I to can't. their uh, personal agenda. I don't have a personal agenda. <laughs> I feel like agenda. we should have proofread. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the Muppets are designed as a combination of rod puppets and hand puppets. A common facial design for a Muppet is a large, gaping mouth beneath big, protruding eyes. The puppets so are... So they look like for us. <laughs> <laughs> they look like Canadians, yes. The puppets are often molded or carved out of various types of foam and then meticulously coated with a variety of materials, including fleece, fur, or other felt-like material. 
Muppets may represent anything from humans to animals to robots or even fanciful creatures, monsters, or abstract characters. Traditionally, Jim Henson would sketch the intended look of a new Muppet and Don Salin would build them based on that sketch. Poor Don is the unsung hero of the Muppets. Who? Don. Like Bill Finger to Batman. Yeah, like Bill Finger to Batman. Who's that? I don't know. I don't. Know. I have no idea who Batman is. Like Steve Ditko to Spider Man. Uh, lies. Everybody knows who Steve Ditko is. We all love Steve Ditko. Bill Finger did How the same dare thing. You say that. I don't know who that is. So <laughs> everybody but Nicole. <laughs> everybody but Nicole loves Steve Ditko. Muppets differ quite a bit from typical ventriloquist dummies or puppets, which are usually only animated in the head and face. Contrary to dummies. Muppets are able to move not only their... F- Why did you snicker? I didn't snicker. Okay. Because he's a Muppet. I thought you snickered at I the word snicker. dummies. No, I didn't snicker. Okay. Okay, I snickered at dummies. Okay, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> Muppets are able to move not only their facial features, but their limbs as well. This is miraculous ability is... This miraculous ability is gifted to them by the fact that they're made of softer, <laughs> more pliable materials. Muppets also presented separate... Also presented separate from their puppeteers. <laughs> Muppets are also presented separate oh, from boy. their puppeteers. They usually remain you. hidden or outside of the camera frame. Maybe <laughs> if you weren't so um, <laughs> big on putting in your personal agenda and you could have proofread it when I gave it to you. Like I, like that's what happens when I, I handed it off for to a you. Rewrite. <laughs> well, yeah, but then you I'm gonna catch, give it back to you for a proofread. You catch all that stuff, but no, you had an agenda that you had There's to no stick in there. There's no agenda here. You didn't actually read it. You just stuck in agendas, didn't? I didn't no. Well, okay. It, I thought it was a marriage of our ideas. No, I think you took it over. It's a dysfunctional <laughs> marriage. None of it makes sense. When I didn't take over it. this script, Chris. Okay. We reached an agreement. A long time ago, and now here we are. I trusted you, Faraz. I trusted you. That's all I have to say. In fact, the idea of using the camera frame as a stage was... All you did was put quotation marks around things. You didn't put anything. (laughs) You put the quotation marks on stage. I didn't do that. I don't remember doing that. Was an invitation... It was an innovation. Innovation started by the lovable Muppet franchise. <laughs> what? <laughs> Before this grand innovation. You did not say that as excited as the <laughs> sentence I'm oh, sorry. In fact, <laughs> the idea of using the camera frame as a stage <laughs> was an innovation started by the lovable Muppets franchise. <laughs> yes. Uh, you did it way better than I did. Before this grand innovation, <laughs> I in was the totally t- lost where we were. So by the way, I'm still there. <laughs> in the dark times, <laughs> <laughs> a stage would consist of a curtain hiding the performers. When was the dark times for us? Before this innovation, your sentence says that. You know, everything before the fifties was technically the dark times. Okay, I th- <laughs> 1955 was a tender year that brought about a lot of dark. Like when things. there was knights on horses. Is that what we're talking about? Release the hounds, Smithers. <laughs> they only had Punch and Judy at that time, but not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Come the age of the Muppet, these puppets could even be seen in their full-bodied glory. <laughs> this is done by using invisible strings to move the characters' bodies and mouths and then adding the vocals later. Since Disney's acquisition of the Muppets, newer models of the characters have been produced and maintained by Puppet Heap. Puppet Heap is a puppet design, fabrication, and production company based in Hoboken, New Jersey. The company was founded by artist and designer Paul Somebody, Paul who had... Andrego. Paul Andre- Andre- and yeah, Draco. Okay who had worked for the Jim Henson Company from 1992 to 2001. This was after the dark times. <laughs> yeah, during the dark times, what did he do? He did nothing. He it did was nothing. dark. He designed the characters for Disney Channel's Bear in the Big Blue House. The puppeteer, often called the Muppet Performer, holds the Muppet above his head or in front of his body, with one hand operating the head and mouth, and the other gracefully manipulating the hands and arms, <laughs> either with two separate control rods or by wearing 
the Muppets' hands like gloves. So Can every time the finger quotes as you do that, so people <laughs> know, like you know, like like change the tone of your voice, like wearing. He does change it. He pauses before he puts a quote in. Is this just your? Is quotes your commas? I didn't put that quotation mark there. That was yours. I, I left in I your quotation marks. Sentences. I don't understand why they were there. I don't understand why they were there either. So I left in all your quotation marks. I don't think I put quotation marks you in You did. There. Okay. He has one whole sentence as a paragraph. Yes. That's two sentences. There's a second sentence coming up. Oh, I thought that was a comma the way this was going. <laughs> <laughs> one note of this design is that most Muppets are left-handed as the puppeteer uses his right hand to operate the head while operating the arm rod with his left hand. High fives for left-handers. By the way, arm rod was my nickname in high school. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure you lost that in college. (laughs) In advanced Muppets, several puppeteers may control a single character. Typically, the performer who controls the mouth also provides the voice of the character. As technology has evolved... The Jim Henson team and other puppeteers have developed an enormous variety of means to operate Muppets for film and television, including the use of suspended rigs, internal motors, remote radio control, and computer enhancements. Creative use of technologies has allowed creative use of technologies has allowed for scenes in which Muppets appear to be riding a bicycle rowing a boat, and even dancing on stage with no puppeteer in sight. Wow. (laughs) 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 Thank you, Linda. Thanks, Linda. Wow. Uh, after the show, I'm going to isolate that noise, <laughs> and that's going to be my new notification on my phone. Wow! <laughs> it will be when I text you. That'll be the tone. Yeah. <laughs> wow. wow! Muppets tend to develop organically, meaning that the puppeteers diligently, diligently <laughs> taking their time to develop their characters and voices. <laughs> Muppets are also test-driven. And passed around from one Henson troop member to another. That sounds so wrong. <laughs> it sounds like Faraz on a Friday night. Yeah. In the hope of finding the perfect human to puppet match. So many hands up their asses. <laughs> like Faraz on a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> one interesting note is that when children interact with Muppets, they tend to act as though the Muppets were living creatures, even when they could see the puppeteers. Which is true because... Uh, when researching this, watching a documentary on Jim Henson, he was talking about that point, and he had Kermit. But when you were watching him and Kermit, I mean, he's sitting in his chair with Kermit on his hand, mm-hmm. talking to the interviewer, and you tend just to look at Kermit. You don't even look at Jim Henson. Yeah. In that same year of 1955. Tender year. Tender oh. year. No, I'm I, I'm ignoring that. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot call that a tender year. It's just making it feel wrong and abused. And you know, the tender years is one of my favorite shows. Oh, I like that more than Happy Days. Wonder Years was overrated. <laughs> In that same tender year of 1955, the Muppets were introduced on a television show called Salmon Friends. Never heard of it. That aired on WRC TV. In Washington, D.C. It was a local show, so it's not surprising you never heard of it. Conceptualized by Henson Couple, the series was notable for being the first <laughs> form of puppet media not to include a curtain behind the characters. That says was written in Caveman. <laughs> <laughs> Conceived by Henson Couple. But instead, this sentence continues on, relying on the natural framing of the scene, just like the show did. This allowed the audience to hear, see, <laughs> and get closer to the puppets. Oh, sorry. And Jim was able to give them more expressive and animated faces. The show was on at 1125, same Muppet time, same Muppet channel, PM, and was geared solely for adults. It featured zany sketches. And sophomoric record pantomimes. Henson was very experimental, like a few people I know. 
<laughs> and like to try new things. Like somebody who wrote this script. <laughs> <laughs> he, there's so many, wow. There's so many errors. <laughs> I don't know if there's so many errors. I think the script was edited by Henson Couple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, God. Uh, woo, woo, woo. Uh, wow. Yeah. It's hot in here. <laughs> and bothered. He approached the producers in a quiet but commanding dominatrix way. <laughs> and his ideas would make it to air no matter what. Then in the 1960s, Kermit and Rolf, the dog appeared on skits in several late night talk shows and advertising commercials, including the Ed Sullivan show. <laughs> Rolf was the first Muppet with a regular gig on network television, appearing as Jimmy Dean's sidekick on Oh, who would have guessed it? The Jimmy <laughs> Dean Show. <laughs> Frank Oz. Didn't he make sausage? Yes, he did. Frank Oz. Yoda. A puppeteer for Henson. Not at that time. Nope. Ugh, really? He was a puppeteer for Henson, but he wasn't And Yoda. later, the iconic voice of legendary Muppet Miss Piggy <laughs> would play one arm of Rolf while Henson did the rest. Rolf was the first character to really gain stardom for Henson. Now, that originally said Yoda, but was he Miss Piggy? Yes. Or did you just give it misinformation to be funny? Did I? I don't know. You did you? have to check it out. I'm pretty sure my Muppet knowledge says he was Miss Piggy. Okay. Maybe not the voice, when you but think the about Muppeteer. It, well, Miss then he would Piggy be the voice. Yoda do sound pretty similar. Do they? I mean, think about Miss Piggy. Yeah, both voice. are very pretentious. <laughs> 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 you know... They seem to think that they're the stars of the show. I mean, Empire, you know, <laughs> seems to focus around Yoda, if you ask everybody. Okay. I believe you. The next media conquered was television commercials. This was the perfect medium to set up and sell a product in six seconds, much like somebody's sex life, while delivering a solid punchline. Why are you in my bedroom? <laughs> oh, I give that ten seconds. Oh, thank Some you. Some of the products, hot. By the crew were Wilkins Coffee, Lifesavers, Marathon, which never happened, La Choy, and Perina Dog Chow because Rolf needed to get <laughs> his fix in and he was a hungry dog. What do you what do you mean Marathon never happened? Oh no. Ten seconds is not a marathon. <laughs> oh, I see. I get it. You were conceptualized by Henson Couple. I am. Henson Couple make me <laughs> <laughs> The next project was Timepiece, a 1965 experimental short film directed, written, produced by, and starring Jim Henson. The film is about an ordinary man moving in constant motion in a desperate attempt to escape the passage of time. Timepiece is one of the few live-action projects Jim Henson made that did not involve any form of puppetry. The movie was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Live Action Short Film in 1966. And you can... I, it says nominated. I feel like if it won, it would have said it won. You can, I thought it was a cliffhanger, so until we got to the next page. Well, <laughs> then I have to continue reading, don't I? You can find it on YouTube <clears throat> if you want to watch it. Next, in Supple 1966. Oh, what? Tricks again. <laughs> Joan Gans. Wait a minute. Why would 1966 be supple? <laughs> can you let her read? Can no, I would like out. to know why. The, the whole paragraph explains why it's supple. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Joan Gans Cooney and Lloyd Morissette began developing an educational television program targeted towards children. You know, I take that back. That makes it creepy. <laughs> this makes it very creepy. Yeah, and this paragraph doesn't describe <laughs> supple at all. They approached Henson to design several Muppet it's like a characters. like James Gunn the... paragraph. <laughs> to Shh. design Ooh. several pu- Muppet characters for the program. It wasn't inappropriate. It just fell flat. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> it was produced by the Children's Television Workshop, and the show debuted as Sesame Street, the lovely year of 1969. I love Sesame Street as a kid. Jim Henson and the Muppets' involvement in Sesame Street began when he and Cooney met at one of the curriculum planning seminars held in Boston. It was felt that if they could not bring Henson on board, they should do the show without any puppets whatsoever. Henson, however, was excited about the opportunity and immediately jumped aboard. The producers and Henson had a number of meetings on what they wanted to do with the show, and one of the very first ideas was to create a character that the children could live through. That character would be the iconic 
Big Bird. Oh, I was going to say Oscar. No. The Grouch? No, Big uh, Bird. Yeah. Who relates to him more than adults? That's it's true. It's supposed to be for children. And so? <laughs> You want ones for the kids to relate to. I relate to Oscar. Kids relate to Cookie Monster. Funny side note. Wikipedia said they had to twist Henson's arm, basically, for him to do Sesame Street. And the documentary said that he was all about it. Mm -hmm. So who's speaking the truth? Mm -hmm. Did you look at the notations for Wikipedia? No. No. Are you supposed to? You should always check your sources. Okay. (laughs) Wikipedia isn't just a source. Can we talk about the greatest Sesame Street character ever? Is it Oscar? No, is it I was really monster? trying to segue into Big Bird. Oh, oh, oh. And I was going to say, check your sources. Have you not listened to any of our shows? <laughs> <laughs> Big Bird, everyone's favorite banana yellow avian. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> what? That's not what I wrote. <laughs> I read it, but that's not what I wrote. It actually been on the drawing table before. But now with this show... <laughs> Question what? But not with this show. Not. This this is now with this show. I know. And then there's an exclamation mark because when but I now I proofread your show. stuff. I need someone to proofread my stuff. I sent this to you to proofread you. I rewrote it. And you proofread it. I think both of you need to quit drinking while you're writing. <laughs> you proofreaded it like a Henson couple. We're doing like a Seth Rogan thing, we're writing scripts, but instead of being high we're writing them, we're just drinking. I we're guess. It. Faraz's distillery is not doing well for the <laughs> proofreading. He did nothing but all he did was add the words banana yellow avian. That's it. <laughs> and some exclamation marks and a bunch of quotation marks. But now the show! quotation marks are yours. Are you sure? Yes. I, don't, I don't quote a lot. Well, I don't even know why they were in there. You know what? And I can tell you right now, Faraz is not either because there hasn't been one quote. Unquote. Unquote. This was, <laughs> yeah, they're not mine. I would quote and unquote. Okay. This was a perfect opportunity to bring the enduring character to life. Henson sketched out the puppet and even designed how it would be controlled by the operator. The puppeteer would wear a suit with a television monitor inside of it so he could watch himself perform from outside of the character. His hand would control the mouth. I always did wonder how they did Big Bird. Now we know. Now we know. Because it's Mike's you know. Super Short Show. And it's not. That's not a, how what I would have pictured wow. they would have done it. I would thought they would put two small people in there, and they would have to stand. <laughs> <laughs> One would stand on the other's shoulders. Interesting. I just pictured Peter Dinklage like somebody <laughs> else. Like, yeah, Warwick Davis. But that's yeah. Good. But like Warwick Davis is definitely the feet. Peter Dinklage is doing everything else. Henson's idea was much safer. Henson agreed to waive his performance fee for full ownership of the Sesame Street Muppets, but would split any revenue that generated with the CTW. Who does that sound like for us? Not Nintendo. George Lucas. Oh. oh come on, <laughs> even I knew that. <laughs> Henson's Muppet became a crucial part of the show's popularity, and it also pushed Henson into the glory of the national spotlight. The Muppets made it easy. <laughs> Why'd you pause it for that? I just say right now, I've never written a script, but the more I read these things and how horribly we proofread them, it's making me feel more confident when I actually write one. Yeah. Take a shot. I feel like all the mistakes add character to them. Well, here's... here I thought we were just reading them like crap. <laughs> here's the thing. We, now we don't have to read them like crap. They're written like crap. <laughs> Faraz was busy this week. And so I wrote it all, and I pushed it to Faraz, and I said, here, correct it. And he put in banana yellow avian, <laughs> some exclamation and marks. And a shit ton of exclamation And some supple, quotations. Supple and tender years. Yes. <laughs> you all forget about the lovely year of 1969. It's in there. Nicole read it. I thought it was 1955. I don't know. No. It was tender. Sesame Street debuted in the lovely year of 1969. Yeah, but I'm still trying to figure out why 1966 was so supple. It wasn't. That's I feel the like thing. we should give up on that one. <laughs> nope. <laughs> this is just one of those ones that I'm going to keep going with until you give me a good, bad answer. <laughs> <laughs> the Muppet segments of the show scored high, and eventually more Muppets were added over the course of the show. Sesame Street received critical acclaim, and the Muppets' involvement in the series was touted to be the vital component of the show's blossoming popularity. Why are you giggling? Because <laughs> the certain words I wrote... <laughs> Then in the ripe <laughs> early 1970s, why were the 1970s ripe? You were gonna, be, you're about to find out, sir. Okay. Yeah, because of one name. <laughs> then in the ripe 
early 1970s. This is talking about the 70s. Not, th- not a movie preview. Is it Lauren? Was it right because yes, the 70s smelled, or was it right because they were ready to blossom? You just talked about blossoming popularity. Okay. See how they'd segue into each other seamlessly? So that the 70s smelled. Not at all. No, not at all. Lorne Michaels approached Muppet Studio to develop a recurring skit for Saturday Night Live. This skit would become the Land of Gorge segment. After about six shows, it was determined that Henson's humor did not quite gel with Michaels. However, it was here that Henson started to develop the idea for his own variety show. Thus was the legendary Muppet Show born. Yay! (laughs) It's time to light the lights. (laughs) unlike sesame street which was geared towards a younger demographic this show would be focused purely on comedy and aimed towards an adult audience it was pitched to all three of the big networks at the time all three but none of them knew exactly what to do with it there was only three ABC, just, NBC. I just said that. I know. CBS. I wasn't questioning CBS that. Yes or Fox? But you said it CBS. like you didn't believe it. No, I wasn't. There was no Fox. question mark at the end of my inflection. Okay. <clears throat> I just forgot to put an exclamation mark there, so I was making one. Okay. With my voice. Keep going. Which you questioned. Sorry. Useless. Needlessly. Never useless. <sighs> what What <clears throat> happened? I was trying no, to guess the three. The three were, and I, and she I said thought... ABC, NBC, and I wasn't sure if it was CBS or Fox. And oh. he was telling me that Fox came out in the 80s. So yes. CBS was the third. Yes. There was PBS too, but they, weren't, they weren't the big three. <clears throat> While at NBC, Henson learned that London was interested in producing 24 half-hour segments of the show. Wow. Lou Grade approached Henson and agreed to produce the series for the British company Associated Television. I am so glad I don't have the page turns or Chris or... <laughs> I didn't get that many either. No, it's just me. No, Chris has one. <clears throat> JL, you do have one as well. Yeah, but at least it's the last one. Debuting in the plump year of 1976, <laughs> The Muppet Show. <laughs> the Muppet Show. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. What? What? <laughs> Why? Why he was nineteen? There's a better way to segue into Miss Piggy. Why? Why was nineteen seventy six fat? I feel like you J- JL just touched upon it. Yeah, okay. and you know what? That's the first time your girlfriend has choked during a show. So, oh god. Oh boy. <clears throat> okay. okay. If I can plump it away. No, no, no. I'd prefer you not. Debuting. In yeah, the plump Nicole's year mom. of 1976, still wrong. The Muppet <laughs> Show introduced characters such as the seductive Miss Piggy, comical Fozzie Bear, awkward Gonzo, and an energetic animal. And but, if you put all those together, you still don't get Podcast 42. No. <laughs> but wait, there's more. <gasps> but wait, there's more. The show also saw the return of Kermit the Frog and Rolf. Ah! You need to put a little more excitement into these exclamation points. <laughs> Through its syndication, The Muppet Show became bountifully popular due to its sketch comedy variety format, unique brand of humor, and prolific roster of guest stars. The show went on to receive 21 Primetime Emmy Award nominations during its run, winning four awards, including Outstanding Variety Series in 1978. And what, why, why was 1978 have no descriptive word in front of it? Because that was a nothing, um, yeah. You know, it, it wasn't a word. Bountiful say, year was, for them. I went on. It wasn't count. plump. It wasn't tender. It yeah, wasn't... no. Plump is only because Miss Piggy came out in '76. Uh, okay. Good God, Chris. Seductive uh, Miss Piggy. The seductive Miss Piggy. The punny Fozzie Bear. <laughs> Jeez. Christ, <laughs> <Who writes this? laughs> <laughs> uh. Henson wanted to take his performers beyond the realm of television. The success. Oh of... my God! Just go, go, just, just go. I feel like there should be more just to that go. sentence. There will be more. Just keep reading. Somebody oh, read shit. ahead. <laughs> Somebody read ahead. Yeah, I just did too. Just <laughs> <laughs> the success of the Muppet Show enticed Henson. And his crew to flirtatiously dip their toes into the moist, willing pool of theatrical motion picture. What? Lou Grade was on board. <laughs> and together with the rest of the crew started working on the first film, The Muppet Movie. 
I feel dirty. <laughs> I feel a little relieved. Thank you. Yeah, that was <clears> all <throat> built up, and I never realized how much tension there was talking about the Muppet movie. <laughs> but hey, moving right along. The film I see what you did there. I see what you did there. The film was released in the fruitful year of 1979. Why? I you. Why are you glaring at me like this? I didn't do anything. Explain why 1979 was fruitful. If you give JL a chance, he'll explain it. Okay. He explained the other year. Is this where they introduced bananas? The talking bananas? No. Okay. All right. The biggest takeaway from the movie was the fact that some evil guy wanted to kill Kermit and take him and make frog legs out of him. <gasps> but a minor takeaway was Kermit the Frog riding No, a that's not <laughs> right. Why did you change that all around? Because, really, that's what <clears throat> I remember from the Muppet movie, other than them singing along, moving right along, and Fozzie's uncle Studebaker. Was, sorry, was that the, cur- the frog leg thing? Yeah, that was the whole thing, is that they go to the one place and the guy wants to take Kermit. He wants... He want, he's in charge of like um, his restaurant's all about frog legs. Yeah, that's Are the frog plot. Legs that good. I can't remember them. I've had them as a child, but I don't remember. Well, the I've never like. had them, but it, they, this movie kind of traumatized me from ever having frog legs. <laughs> they, they do <laughs> taste like chicken, but no, that's not that's just saying I, that. But they I do thought. taste like chicken. But, in all honesty, but you don't I remember Kermit no, and the Kermit bicycle? Riding the bicycle is a phenomenal scene, especially when you look at the year it came out, because the effects are. Great. Yeah, okay. in the fruitful year of 1979. <laughs> sure. Which has nothing to do with bicycles. You better explain yourself later in this paragraph. You know what? It was all done with a series of puppet shots interlaced with marionette shots. I have no idea what that means, but hey, let's just remember marionettes are puppets with strings. And to challenge himself <laughs> and his crew, Henson next had Kermit and Miss Piggy, Piggy riding bikes together and even riding in an intertwined figure eight. So nothing to do with fruit. That means what? Fruit wow, doesn't always this... have to be associated with fruit. It just means that it was a bountiful year. Okay. But you didn't it was say lucrative. Bountiful. Fruitful you know also what? means lucrative, okay. productive, which has nothing to do with this paragraph. You Wait, lie. You talk, a lot Frost happened. Just, there was a lot. Th- Frost just puts one word into a thesaurus and picks every word. I guess. <laughs> I think he just points his finger at something and goes, "I'm using yeah, this." Yeah, that one. <laughs> because as if that wasn't impressive enough. Like Faraz pointing his finger at a word that he doesn't know the meaning of. <laughs> Except that I do know the meaning of great many words, JL, as you've <laughs> yourself mentioned several times on this podcast. Not so if tonight. you want to go ahead and compare vocabulary so... knowledge, go ahead. Oh my gosh, it's a standoff. <laughs> I know. Henson then had multiple characters riding bikes together, all being pulled by two out of frame tricycles. Oh, I love tricycles. <laughs> It'd be more impressive if it was a unicycle. That would be hard. But it would have been awesome. It would have been fruitful. (laughs) (laughs) The bikes were attached to each other by rods, and the Muppets' mouths were moved by radio control. Dude, that's impressive. That is impressive. Mm -hmm. Fruitful, even. If you see the scene, (laughs) there's like 10 or 12 bikes with with different Muppets on it. It's not fruitful. (laughs) It's not plump. It's not fruitful. It's not tender. After the Muppet movie, the second and third films followed. The Great Muppet Caper, where they took on Charles Grodin, and The Muppets Take Manhattan, where they introduced a very underrated Muppet named Rizzo. She debuted in the sweet <laughs> 1981 and the gentle <laughs> 1984, <laughs> respectively. Why? Why? Oh, okay. In the epic year... Of the greatest year known to man, <laughs> the mighty 1983. <laughs> Henson introduced another television series, Fraggle Rock, which ran on HBO in the United States until the regretful 1987. <laughs> no questions about years there, huh, Chris? No, it, all, it, it, makes, <laughs> it all makes sense. It makes no sense yeah, whatsoever. <laughs> I totally ran with it. <laughs> and I was mad that Fraggle Rock was on HBO because we couldn't afford HBO. Down in Fraggle Rock. I never saw Fraggle Rock until really late in life. It was good. By the late 1980s, Henson entered discussions with Michael Eisner and the Walt Disney Company, resulting in Disney's acquisition of Jim Henson Productions. Eisner also wanted to include the Sesame Street characters as part of the deal. Henson, however, declined the proposal. 
But as discussions between the two companies continued, development began for Muppet themed attractions in Hollywood Studios at Walt Disney World. Yes, it was MGM Studios at the time. I left it the way Chris had it. As I left a great many things Chris had. Yes. <laughs> All the mistakes. I'm, I'm only saying MGM Studios because it's the original name. Yeah. And When negotiations it... were happening, it was MGM Studios. It was MGM. I did change it to Hollywood because that's what it is now. That's fine. And then next year it'll be called Star Wars Land, so <laughs> the script will be outdated. Where we celebrate all movies, <clears throat> but mostly, mostly Star, Star Wars. Wars. Negotiations broke off after Jim Henson's death in the fateful year of 1990. Disney did manage to obtain a licensing agreement with Jim Henson Productions for permission to use the characters in their theme parks, though. Disney also co-produced the fourth and fifth Muppet films, The Muppet Christmas Carol and Muppet Treasure Island, one of my favorites. Starring the great Tim Curry. Yeah, yeah. Go back and listen to our Tim Curry episode, everybody. We talk about it. Uh, this happened in Jovial 1992. <laughs> Where and everybody laughed. And then All of 1992. They just laughed and laughed and laughed the entire year. Because it was so <laughs> jovial. So um, up. I think it's a good year. I love Muppet Christmas Carol. Who played Ebenezer Scrooge in that? I don't Uh, remember. He He was great, though. He's just teasing us. Whoever it was was great. I remember that. Uh, Wait, wait, wait. I got it. I got it. I got it. Who doesn't know this? Was it George C. Scott? No. Oh. I don't have it. Michael Caine. Fuck. I just remember it was like an epic person. He had to rebound after Jaws 4. Uh, Muppet Treasure Island came out in the adventurous 1996. <laughs> After that, the characters starred in Muppets Tonight, which ran on ABC from Still Adventurous 1996 <laughs> to Sorrowful 1998. A sixth film, Muppets from Space, was released in the brazen year of 1999. You know, we do not talk about that film. <laughs> you know what year is Sorrowful? 2018. <laughs> That's what year is Sorrowful. <laughs> I might have to agree with that. Oh. <laughs> 14 years after initial negotiations began, Disney finally purchased the Muppet Intellectual Properties from the Jim Henson Company for $75 million on February 17th of the rough year of 2004. <laughs> You look like you're so done. <laughs> you sort of throw Why are these years so descriptive? <laughs> I don't remember any of them being that way. Because you put so many years in all your scripts, Chris, and I get sick of taking them off, so I might as well describe every single one. Oh, are this, you describing is this from personal? Or? No, just random words, because I'm sick of having to take years off for no reason. Why do you take the years off? There's, they're important. Why? No one cares. Because no one's going to fact no, check because us. because then we know when it happened. Yeah. Mm. There's a timeline. And now we have descriptions to go with the years. <sighs> this acquisition included the rights and trademarks to the Muppets and Bear in the Big Blue House characters, as well as to the Muppet Film and Television Library. Exceptions included the Sesame Street characters, Fraggle Rock, the Muppets Take Manhattan, Muppets from Space, and Kermit Swamp Years. As part of the acquisition, Disney formed the Muppet Studio which is solely responsible for naming years and managing the characters <laughs> and franchise. As a result, the term Muppet became a legal trademark owned by Disney, although Sesame Workshop continues to apply their, the term to their characters. Oh. oh, it's me. That's you. Yeah, you wrote this. I was following him, really. I was engrossed by everything. No, I'm sure you were engrossed. At least grossed. By the year of 2004. The daring 2008. <clears throat> Disney gradually began reintroducing the franchise to the mainstream in daring 2008 (laughs) as a method of regaining a wider audience disney started to produce and air their own comedy shorts on youtube after the muppets bohemian rhapsody was posted on the muppet studios youtube channel it ultimately gained 50 million views and took home two webby awards did anybody watch that? Yeah, it was good. Mm, I didn't. It was good. Beaker was the star of the show. Ooh. They did take out all the controversial lyrics, though. I thought that was kind of funny. Well, yeah, you just had Beaker say it. And, you know, you don't realize <laughs> yeah, what he yeah. said. <laughs> <laughs> that same year, the Muppets starred in a web series with Cat Cora called The Muppets Kitchen with Cat Cora, <laughs> where cooking demonstrations were shown. Oh my god. Then Disney you know, really went along with their 
They're owning the Muppets, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> then, in audacious 2011, <laughs> the Muppets were featured in eponymous. You don't think a timeline is needed? Eponymous. Eponymous. You don't think a timeline is needed? Eponymous. I don't think that it's needed for every point. It reads like a bullet point notepad. The next time you write a script, could okay. you change like the words for what we describe for the year? Mm. That's why I, I feel we can make a running gag on of times this, but I don't really want to go along with it, but I do. All right. Now we all in know. the roaring twenty twenties. <laughs> I can't wait. Much like me and my exclamation points, though. So I don't want them to go away. I want them to become more descriptive. All right, keep going. Oh, they're descriptive. All right, it's audacious. In audacious two thousand, just like the script. The oh shit. <laughs> The Muppets were... I may have compromised my contract. Mm-hmm. The Muppets were... <laughs> contract? The Muppets were featured in an eponymous seventh film... In an, oh, God. I, I spoke that wrong. The seventh film was intended to serve as a creative reboot, quotation marks, for the characters. Disney was also furthering development on a Muppet film since 2008, when it was considered a when it considered adapting an unused screenplay written by Jerry Joel, directed by James Bobin, written by Jason Siegel and Nicholas Stoller, and starring Siegel, Amy Adams, Chris Cooper, and Rashida Jones, the film was embraced by widespread critical acclaim, commercial success, and an Academy Award for Best Original Song. I've got everything that I need. Because he's a man. <laughs> was or that is the he song? Muppet? Yeah, the, the Muppet one, right? Is that it? Oh, I just remember the opening. Oh, number. I loved because I'm a man or am I Muppet? Yeah, that was the song <laughs> I remember. In March of the following year, the Muppets received a collective star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Disney greenlit a sequel in March of Delicate 2012 <laughs> with Bobin and Stoller. Returning to direct and write. The eighth film, Muppets Most Wanted, was released in Juicy 2014 with Ricky Gervais, Tina Fey, and Ty Burrell in supporting roles. Pause. Can we go back to the fact that you said daring 2008 and that was the year of the housing market crash? So I think you should have picked well, a more appropriate term for what was actually. I going already on used regretful. <laughs> He's running uh, out of terms. No, I think it is daring because the housing market was market was crashing, and you had to be daring to purchase one. <laughs> Just say that's right. All right. He's making JL a... is very good at finding the explanation behind yes. this. He's making a I dumb am... point. He's running out of adjectives. That's all that's happening. That is exactly <laughs> like true. the artist was running out of pages. <laughs> because you know what? At the end of the day, Disney was interested in expanding the Muppets' presence on television. Discussions for a new primetime series began in April of the surreal. 2015 <laughs> Bill Prady was commissioned to write a script for a pilot with the working title Muppets 2015. I think it was called Muppets Real 2015. There's a typo. There, <laughs> there probably is cuz there's always a typo. They're all... In May of that same oh, you should hire a proofreader. <laughs> cuz in May of that same breathtaking year ABC announced that it had greenlit the series and called it, wait for it, The Muppets. Wow. Dun, dun, dun. dun. <laughs> oh, I see another typo coming up. <laughs> oh, oh, there's shit. always a typo. <clears throat> the new series premiered on September 22nd of Spine Tingling 2015. I thought 2015 was surreal. How could it be Spine <gasps> Tingling and Surreal? I have a, a plot lot going hole. on in 2015. Uh-huh. Continuity error. I'm like the X Men universe. <clears throat> wow. The show was a mockumentary format, much like the Office TV show, but around the premise of a late night TV talk show instead of a paper company. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't that good. It was great. It was not good. It, it was, was great. Not good. It wasn't spine tingling or surreal. It was not good. It became spine tingling here and there. Nope. No, it, it was did not. not good. It was not Though good. Though directed at adult audiences like its predecessor series, the show attracted criticism from groups like One Million Moms, who attacked the adult targeted show for not being written for child audiences, which I did not care about because it was just poorly written. Yes. Agreed. The Muppets would actually shoot back with a parody episode around the criticism. 
wherein they were accosted by a group called the One Million Angry Parents Association and were represented by a mere three members, despite the claim of having one million members. That's kind of funny. That's funny. I'm going to take my time. <gasps> Jail is a page turn. Turning my page. Turn the page. For my uh. One paragraph and... One Extra sentence. <laughs> 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 Nevertheless, <laughs> one million moms and other groups encouraged boycotts of the show for not accommodating their preferences, insisting that the Muppets should abandon their historic adult latable material in favor of appeasing a family and child demographic. <laughs> Consequently, ABC canceled the show for being lame on March 1st of the... So-called gloomy 2016. No, 2016 was pretty gloomy. Chris tossed his script on the floor. Was pretty yes. gloomy. And that was... Uh, I think the end of 2016 was gloomy. The I rest of, of it, it was, was actually sort of upbeat. That was your adjective-ridden Muppets history. I told you this script would be controversial. I promised you that at the beginning. Written. I delivered my promises. Now, I want a metaphor show next time. <laughs> Let's do fishbowl facts. This is where we take... Fishbowl. Facts from a fishbowl. Ooh, I could do a metaphor show. Oh, boy. What's a metaphor? Why did I put that out there? The prototype of Kermit was a lizard made from cardboard and covered in material cut from Henson's mother's fuzzy green coat. The eyes were two halves of Wacky Stacks, a 1970s line of toy plastic eggs. When the manufacturer went out of business, Henson bought their entire stock, so he had Muppet eyes forever. Fishbowl (coughs) facts. You know what? Two Muppet sung songs made the pop charts. Rubber Ducky, you're the one. <laughs> By Sesame Street's Ernie hit number 16 in 1970, and someday you'll find it. Because you know what? The Rainbow Connection by Kermit the Frog reached number 25 in 1979. I'm surprised Put Down the Ducky was not one of them. Put Down the Ducky. When all of the celebrities came and did cameos telling him to put down his rubber ducky. I'm surprised Manamana didn't make it. Uh, I love that song. How can you not? You still haven't read your first fishbowl fact. Now you're taking a second one. You're you're a greedy fishbowler. You're glaring at me. I'll (laughs) read your fact. In more than 30 years, Beaker from The Muppet Show has spoken only three lines, sadly temporary, makeup ready, and bye bye. I don't remember any of him. Those. I don't remember him talking either. But I can imagine him saying bye bye. Bye bye. Miss yeah. Miss Piggy's full original name was Miss Piggy Lee. Ooh. Ooh. Fishbowl facts. That's a fishbowl fact. Until Inductive. 1983, HBO aired only movies and sports. Its first show was Fraggle Rock. Very down in Fraggle Rock, which I'm still mad about. The Muppet characters' frames are made out of flexible polyfoam. Foam rubber isn't used because it disintegrates. The skin, hold on, the skin, let's put some quotation marks around that, is made out of synthetic material called antron fleece, which is furry, dyeable, and that's very important, and doesn't get fuzzballs. Wow. Fishbowl. Facts. Unlike Faraz. I don't get fuzzballs. Oh. Uh, I've seen it. I use Charmin. (laughs) Charmin? Charmin, with a hard C-H. As its English name dictates. Oh, my God. Mm, I don't think it's called that. Please don't squeeze it. Yeah, don't share that with your charming. In Portugal, Kermit the Frog is named Cocos. In Spain, he's called Gustavo. Oh, Gustavo. <laughs> Ooh, I think that's how he got his evil counterpart in Muppets Most Wanted. What was, was his name Gustavo? Cam- no, what was it? Clem- uh, Constantine. Yeah. Constantine, Constantine was his evil counterpart. The worst emperor of Rome. An early draft of the screenplay for the Muppet movie included a recurring role that dropped his fishbowl fact and then picked it up for Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. He was supposed to appear several times disguised as a sheriff, a busboy, an extra for Roz, and as a head on Mount Rushmore. What year was that? I don't know. It was the fabulous, it was subtle, twisty, windy, uh, porcupiney, supple, nineteen seventy <laughs> nine nine or nine one. I don't know. Let's rate the beer. He doesn't have anything <laughs> left. He might need a You sip. know what? Oh, my second can. I'm good. Oh, He's okay. on his second can. Which you know what that means? He likes it. He knows how to rate it. 
How do you rate For it? Eyes, how do you rate it? Do I really have to? This script has already taken a lot out of me. <laughs> you, you wrote you it. You changed the script all but the important parts. I left all the important parts in there. I only took some sort of creative liberty okay. with my expression. I will explain the beer rating. It's a dashing one through six to simulate a beautiful, breathtaking six-pack that's rowdy and wonderful. But not supple. That was beautiful. I'm trying to throw as many adjectives as I can. That was so good. I could cry a little. <laughs> well, since you're on your second can, Faraz, what do you think of the beer? What's your rating? One through six. No, I need just another second. Someone else go. Um, I'm not really sure how I feel about it. It has a familiar taste, some kind of juice. It doesn't taste like yeah. a beer. A, it doesn't taste like a beer at all. It It's good flavor, but considering it's a beer, I'm not really a huge fan. I, I don't want to give it a one because it's drinkable. I'm going to give it a two because it's supposed to be a beer and it doesn't taste like a beer. So I'm going to give it a two. I'm giving it a four because it doesn't taste like a beer. Yeah, that's why I'm giving it a two. Don't give me that look, JL. It tastes like juice. It doesn't taste like it a beer. It does not taste like juice. I get beer out of it. I don't, I don't get There is a it. juice and beer taste in there. You just have to be <laughs> trained in noticing the difference. I've been doing this for a long time. And apparently I know what I've just been doing like. it. I don't believe that. Because I'm going to give it a five. There is a perfect mixture it is very good, good flavor, and the fact that your boyfriend has had two, I know he should probably agree with me. <laughs> I... He also didn't like the beer that I brought because it was too fruity, and this one is also pretty fruity, but he might like it more than the, the one I brought. I feel berries. like the flavor of, how was this called again? The um, Bilberries. The Bilberries. The Shire Berry. It, it's very sweet. I didn't really associate it with being juice like until nicole just mentioned that but yes there is that presence of juice but it's very easily drinkable it's enjoyable i love einstock i don't know if it's just brand loyalty to me or not but i have to give this beer at least the four i understand that it doesn't have that acquainted beer taste and flavor when but i do enjoy drinking it so therefore i I have to i come in with the intent of winning just one person over and it's a win for me do you want you wanted to win for us? I did. Because okay. I do I do agree with Nicole. It's very juicy. Yeah, it's like, you like it when you it's know juicy. What, you know what I really <laughs> like? I really like the Schafferhofer grapefruit beer. But that's Which like, has no alcohol taste to yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And it has no beer taste to it because it's just essentially sparkling water. Exactly. For the record, this is five percent. So it's not too Where bad. Where the Schafferhofer is 2.6, 2.7. This, yeah, no, this I, tastes I like a, a Capri Sun that somebody accidentally used, but that's what I'm uh, saying. splashed if, some beer into. If I were to rate a Schafferhofer, I wouldn't rate it as a, as a beer. And that's the problem. I would probably give it a one or a two. I would... Where did I purchase this? I don't know. Where did you purchase it? Probably <laughs> ABC. Did I get it in the beer section? Yes. Then it's rated as a beer. Well, I don't enjoy it as a beer. And that's you're, allowed. You're analyzing you. too much. You're allowed to not Thank like you. it. She's allowed to not like it. And it, I'm allowed to criticize. Well, you can you can be upset that she doesn't like it, but that doesn't change. No, I'm just analyzing her rating. But I kind of agree with it. But I gave it a higher rating because I like the fact that I it's, know why you did. It's that's so a, beery. So we're, on the, we're actually have the same rating, the, but it's a different scale. to the Schafferhofer, which is really just a sparkling water beer. Well, that's, that's a beer. Where, it's a Schafferhofer. Yes, but it's essentially sparkling water. That essentially, and this is essentially juice. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So therefore, I don't want to rate it like I would a traditional beer because it doesn't taste like a beer to me. So I can't put it on that same rating system. I can't. I can't give it the appropriate rating that I would for any other beer. Just like I wouldn't give Schafferhofer a, a rating for a beer because you would pick that up in the beer section too. Would you call that a beer? I feel like this is one of those moments where, like, the I'm going to go get my popcorn meme pops up. <laughs> you know what? It's your fault 
for oh no no it is <laughs> your fault because Don't you attack me let them no, no, fight no. it out you, you made everybody right angry now. with your script <laughs> i was talking about gentle loving years and everyone's got all no not yeah, every year was you know gentle what? we're going back to shit i need to find one Supple. of those bad years that had <laughs> yeah they there. weren't all regretful going back to gloomy Mortal. 2016 right now gloomy 2016 when the muppets was canceled all right well, uh, let's... It, it deserved to be canceled let's get into the email if anybody would like to email us, please email us at podcast deserved podcast forty two show at gmail dot com. Uh, our first email is from Dirty Baby. Who? Oh. <laughs> Dirty Baby. <laughs> For this, us, why did you get a new email? <laughs> who was who was that celebrity you were talking about before when we did? The oh, last Dan show? Harmon. Yeah, is that him? Is I that don't know. Emailing us. I wow, know know we've got listens. popular listeners. Popular listeners, I like to listen to the live shows on TuneIn, but they disappear. What gives? You have to listen on Spreaker, or you have to uh, subscribe to our Patreon page, and all of our live shows are going to show up on our Patreon page, as well as outtakes, which there are a lot of. If you listen to this show, you can tell there are definitely a lot, we have of a lot of outtakes. We have right, a I lot think of tonight outtakes. we're going to have a lot of outtakes. No, it goes, it all of goes our sound as, checks, all of our yeah. bonus episodes, like uh, wait comparing a burgers and our sound chicken. checks are being recorded the entire time. Yeah, yeah. How do we play them back? I really need to watch what I say. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. But they disappear because I only meant half of what I ever said. You have to get them on. <laughs> you have to get them on Patreon after a day or two. They're free for a day or two. Never mind. Patreon. Pay for them. I meant it all. <laughs> <laughs> I meant it all. The next one is from Patty Patty. <laughs> <laughs> it says, what is your guys' thoughts on the Disney Fox merger? I am for it because I have stock in both companies. That's the only reason? That's Yeah, I, wouldn't that not be the only reason? Wait, 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 if you have, financially, I'm very interested in these two merging. No, I'm just kidding. I, I didn't mean, hear your response. I'm sorry. I should be just laughing at the email name. Patty Patty. Patty Patty. At where? How do you feel about the Disney Fox merger? I'm for it because I own stock in both companies. That is... I'm a Jew. What do you expect from me? That's my answer. <laughs> I don't know why he's got so many problems with your answers tonight. Yes. He doesn't like your answers. I'm aware. Um, because it comes from a financial point of view, not an actual artistic point of view. You guys are the fine. artistic ones here. I'm my the adjectives came from an artistic point of view. Damn I think it! Your adjectives came from lazy writing and just cheap proofreading. <laughs> <laughs> cheap proofreading. You may have cr- points there. <laughs> Her answer is very valid. Um, I don't have any thoughts on it really. I just Disney's owning everything. Eventually, they will own. All the grocery stores and Walmart and everything. So I don't. Agree but then with it'll that. come down to Electronic Arts versus Disney. That's true. No, my thing is, is that as long as it because the Disney Fox merger comes down to Disney and Marvel again. If this will get the X Men and Fantastic Four in the actual Marvel universe, all the crossovers are possible. It creates numerous possibilities because we wouldn't have had the Chitari. In the first Avengers, if we had Fox, that was because of the Annihilation Wave. So we would have had Annihilus in there. So the storylines... But they didn't get everything. Disney didn't get everything Fox. No, but but I think they would have gotten the Marvel properties. Do you think? They are. They're getting the Marvel properties. That would have been like a main component. So the X-Men are coming in. You can throw in the X-Men. You can throw in... I'm not sure how they're going to reconcile Magneto with Silver Surfer and Scarlet Witch. Correct. And that's the part where I'm really curious is that you I don't know. You just took everything where Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, you erased everything of them. Being, One of each died they were in Magneto's each franchise. Kids and I don't know how you made them something different in the <laughs> Avengers. Yeah, exactly. And it, yeah, they were different in the Avengers and you have They were experimented on. Yeah. This is where we're gonna do the spin off of the Faraz and JL show. Mm-hmm. Or a comic your rant. comic, sh- comic rant show. So <laughs> comic show. I we think it's good, about comic book movies. But I think there mm. are negatives to it. To the merger, yes. As well explained. Because if anything turns out like the last Fantastic Four movie, I don't want to watch it. Yeah, but Marvel's been doing a pretty good job with the uh, with the movies. Will they screw over Deadpool? Um, 
Um, says that's technically a 20th Century Fox deal right there. I don't know. That's true. If they would get and uh, given Disney's pension for keeping everything PG 13 and under, do I think there needs to be a third Deadpool movie? No. If I'm not mistaken, but will they screw over that character because he does have the fanfare? Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, Pirates of the Caribbean was um, Disney's first PG 13 movie, correct? Released yeah. under their name. Yes, it was. So I don't know. I mean, they've they've there gotten were... more brazen. So maybe they will go ahead and create more R rated. Yeah, Deadpool. It typically was whenever they were going to release an R rated movie, like Splash. Splash. Yeah. Splash is R rated. Yeah, because she's hey, naked. Why do I not remember this? I will look it up. No, you keep talking. I'll look it up while I, you keep talking. No, I'm I'm just confused by if that was actually R rated. I'm pretty sure I don't it's R rated. I'll I don't look remember it up that while at all. you keep talking. No, usually whenever they were gonna do something R rated, they were releasing under a new line or touchstone or but something like that. Miramax. Let's segue Miramax. for a second, if you don't it says mind. PG, but I I could have I don't think they show PG. anything of I thought she would But can we all just Sorry. focus on a one point. I don't mean to like interrupt the conversation so much, but Nicole referenced the movie that was before her time. <laughs> <laughs> and unrealistic. <laughs> yes. So let's just, I guess, appreciate that in wonder for one second and, I don't know, savor it. Right. The moment I'll of silence. You, I'll tell you <laughs> off the air why I feel like I knew that fact. Do you think mermaids are real? No. No. I will tell you off the air why I feel like I knew that fact. Okay. Well, we should wrap it up anyway because we're way past our hour. Well, Remember Justin gave us his opinion mm-hmm. about the Fox. I, just, I didn't have much of an opinion. They oh. didn't get everything. I don't know what they got. They didn't get Fox News. Disney's going to own everything. If it's going to bring more characters in and they do it the right way, I'm okay with it. For that reason, I have to agree with JL. I, I'm more excited to see the Marvel Universe come Maybe back they'll together. reboot The Simpsons and it'll be good again. <laughs> I Simpsons think The is Simpsons still is decent. still good. It's okay. It's, it's just been on for so long. They'll get yeah. Family Guy. Expectations. They'll get Family it's Guy. It's like the longest running that's, American that's sitcom. That's my view on The Simpsons is that it's still good. We just have such high expectations because we always look at what it was and how revolutionary and groundbreaking it was that we expect it to be at that platform at all times. Yeah, well, there's some thoughts to ending your series. It's also get when, you, when you're on top. Yeah, but... Mash, I hate to say Seinfeld. it with the money and everything like that, but I understand why The Simpsons is still. Yeah. Should they have ended it? Yeah, they probably yeah. should have ended it a while ago. It would have been even more iconic if they ended it. They could have just done movies. I think right after the movie came out, they could have probably done two more years after, two, three more years, and called it quits. I think they should call it quits on the TV show and just concentrate on doing movies. Maybe Do a really they, good like, movie. Every one, two years, put something out. Yeah. Shows usually die out because the ratings start to dip. Maybe people are still watching The Simpsons, so it warrants them making more episodes. Yeah, but like shows, like I said before, like mm-hmm. Seinfeld or MASH, they went out on top. They went out on top of the before ratings. Before the ratings could fizzle. Yeah. I understand that. Like Battlestar Galactica MASH the same to this thing. day still has the highest rated finale of all time. We should do a MASH episode. And how MASH. many years later is it that we're still talking about how MASH's finale is the greatest finale of all time? Yeah. I haven't seen MASH since I was a child. Almost, what, 40 years? Yeah, well, Alan Alda, he's the man. So, All right. Where can you find us, Nicole? Spreaker. Find us on Spreaker. We get paid if you listen to us on Spreaker, so we'd really appreciate it there. But basically, anywhere else that you find podcasts, you can find Podcast 42, except for... Stupid Spotify. Spotify. We have no. been submitted to Spotify. <gasps> so by Spreaker. If they accept us, then listen to us on Spotify. But if you can't find us there, find <laughs> us anywhere else, especially Spreaker. And remember, if that's the case. I take it back. Remember, <laughs> email yeah, it's, us. Let's backtrack. At, email us at podcast forty two show at gmail dot com and find us on Facebook at the official podcast forty two show group page. It will ask you to request to be joined. It is a private group full of a ton of memes and a lot of pop culture conversations, but we will accept you no matter what. Just tell us if you heard this episode that that's where you heard about us. And don't forget Patreon. Besides all the paid stuff, there's free stuff too. So you can, if you don't feel like giving money, check out the free stuff. But please give money. We'd appreciate it. We we buy beer every week. <laughs> <laughs> That's plenty we? of reason. <laughs> we? Well, they buy beer too. They never share. What do you mean? It's always in the fridge. 
There's two Konas standing right in front of you. Yeah, those are mine. That you I could have bought. them. Not the IPA. Oh, boy. Beer off off the air. All right, I'm Christopher DeVos. I'm Nicole Fasson. Jail Trose. It's your turn with your one name, Madonna. Go for it. Come on, Bono. The Thoris, <laughs> Thesaurus loving Faraz. Hey. The what? The Thesaurus. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you I'm were so Thor. Glad you dinosaurs. Thor. <laughs> do the dinosaur loving. You didn't do your your thing. I just Bye. did. What are you talking about? No. Nope, fairly you're... well. There you go. <laughs> you are no longer listening to Podcast 42. Some of the stuff you just heard might have been embellished, made up, or just plain incorrect. In other words, don't use this show to write a book report with. You will get a bad grade. Just like all the hosts. But I'm not done yet! JL's Beer Cooler is written and performed by Cremo. Cremo is an award-winning actor and musician. For all things Cremo, including more great music, visit Cremo.com. That's spelled C-R-A-Y-M-O. He is on Twitter at Cremo. Facebook, just search Cremo Music. And also on YouTube under, you guessed it, Cremo.